So we have some pretty rusty brake lines on this side of the Honda Pilot, and they haven't broken through yet, but they definitely need changed. In fact, on the other side, it actually blew out and it started leaking. So we need to replace these brake lines. And in this video, I'll show you some tips to really get some cheap brake lines, but really with some quality materials. So if you've ever worked with steel brake lines, it's a pain to bend. It's just hard to work with when you're double flaring it. It can be tricky. This is a roll of nickel copper brake line. This stuff is so much softer. It's easier to work with and it will never corrode. So this is the stuff you want on your brake lines. It's way better. And a roll about this size is about, this is 25 foot, is about like $45 at the auto parts store. We found this online. It came with 16 fittings and this was like $25. So I'd highly recommend getting this online at a much better deal. This is what the brake line looked on the other side. And you can see this is pretty rusty. It doesn't look very good. But here is the one on the other side. Whoops. But this has some extend on it. It's a uh, neutralizer. It's a rust neutralizer. And it basically chemically changes the rust so it won't keep rusting. It changes it away from rust. It neutralizes the rust so it won't continue rusting. And we put that on there a little bit ago. And it seems like it actually did a pretty good job. It doesn't seem super rusty anymore. But, I mean, since we're in here, we don't really trust this too much. We're going to replace this line anyway because we don't want it to break and bust and then have a problem and have our brakes fail. This stuff definitely would have worked a lot better if we would have caught this earlier when it wasn't so bad. If, if there was just light surface rust, this would work great to keep that from eating in more. We put this stuff on all the new steel fittings and the just the connectors, and that'll keep it from rusting as well. So now we're ready to uh, clip the brake line so we can get this off. Once we do this, this is the point of no return, and we have to replace this brake line. But we'll go ahead and cut it. Right there. There we go. <laughs> and now we can pound a socket on there and we can take this off and take the clip out and just disassemble everything. I'll spray some PB Blaster just on some of these parts so it'll come off a little easier. So now we're going to remove this clip that's holding the mechanism to this bracket because we don't want to break the bracket. So this clip should come out just like that. And then we'll try to wiggle this hose free. There we go. So now we can grab it with some vice grips and we won't have to worry about breaking the bracket. Now we'll take these vice grips and get a good grip right there. Now with the stud remover tool on the end of the bolt here, we're gonna tighten it up. Now we're gonna take the ratchet, put it in the stud remover, while we're holding the vice grips, we're gonna tighten this. And it looks like we broke the bolt loose finally. And <laughs> that's one point for the stud remover. Now we're gonna go ahead and loosen it up so we can put the wrench on the stud remover itself and then on the end of it, we can loosen it with a ratchet. And just like a drill chuck, it loosens up on the piece. Sometimes you have to just hit the screwdriver a little bit, give it a tap and that'll break the rust free and then that hose should pull right out. Now we'll try the same technique on the other hose. We'll put the vice grips on, except this time we're gonna take a socket and it has the six sides. So we're gonna take that, put it on, and then we'll pound it. And it seems like this is always the method that works, except for last time, but now we'll go ahead and try to take it off. And there we go, that broke it loose. Just seems like this method works every time. And I really like it. You don't have to have any special tools. There we go, it came right out. So we'll take this uh, wire cutter here. It's really made for some small pipe, kind of like this brake line. Put this on and we'll tighten it down. 
and we'll start cutting through until we cut all the way through and then we'll add the coupler and some of those fittings. So I went ahead and I cut this off and made a nice clean cut. And now in order to be able to put our fittings on, we need to strip away this plastic coating here. And in order to do that, I'm able to take just a heat gun like this, heat up the plastic, and then that'll kind of strip it away and I can take it away with pliers. So now it is pretty hot. So we heated this up with the hot, the, the, uh, hot air gun and we started to pry it off. And this is really starting to come apart now and this is just what we wanted it to do. So we can peel this back and you can see there's some exposed metal and that's what we wanted to see. And then we can fit our connector on there and maybe even the flaring tool. Then we can put the double flare on there and then we can connect it to the coupler, which will connect it to the brake line, which will go up to the hose and that's everything. So now we're gonna go ahead and double flare this, but you want to make sure to put your fitting on first. It's easy to forget and then you'd have to cut the flare off and do it again. But we're gonna go ahead and put this flaring tool on. It slides on actually in this direction. And then this clamps on to the brake line. Okay. So now we can go ahead and set the depth, which is to the thickness of the base of this black adapter. This is the thing that really makes the double flare. Okay, right there is good. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up these bolts. These used to be wing nuts, but well, they kind of broke when we tried to tighten them down with pliers. You kind of need something more sturdy than that. So we made it so we could tighten it down with a wrench. So now we can go ahead and take this black adapter and we can slide this in the brake hose. And normally you would uh, put a little bit of oil on this so it won't break, it slides and glides a little easier. But as you can tell, we kind of have our own lubricant. And this is just kind of a mess when you're working with an open brake line with the brake fluid going everywhere. But now we're gonna take this, which is called the yoke and I'm going to retract the threads up and then we can put it on the tool and actually make the double flare. So now we can start crimping this, but before you do this, make sure you look to see if your fitting is on the hose because if you forget it and you crimp it, you'll have to cut off part of the hose. So now we'll just take this and tighten it down and here you'll get an idea of what it's like to work with steel brake line and then we, when we switch over to the nickel copper, it's way, way easier to work with. So, so I have it as far as it can go. So I can go ahead and retract this and take it back. Whoops. And so now we can take off the yoke and then take this off. And that is not broken. That's always good. And we have the first step of our double flare. So now we can go ahead and put the yoke back on. And what we'll do is we'll just push down over that. It's Right now it's actually a bubble flare, but when we push back down over it, that will turn it into a double flare. So we'll push down on that and flatten everything into the cone, and then we'll have a double flare done. So I have this as far as it can go and that's bottomed out so I can go ahead and retract this and we'll see what the completed double flare turned out and that looks good it looks like it didn't slide and that's what we want it to look like now with these nuts loosened we can go ahead and pull them off and there we go we got our double flare on the end of that so now we'll take the old brake line and what we'll do is I'll just kind of roll it along here so about that long just to get a rough idea of how long it is and i'll add a little extra so we don't go too short and we can go ahead and cut it here and if it's too long we can kind of make it come around in different angles or even loop so it's not too big of a deal if it's too long but even if it's too long we can cut it down shorter if it's too short we can't make it longer so i'm going to cut it a little bit on the long side and then we can kind of double flare both ends and put the pieces on 
So on the brake line here, I capped it. So while I was making these brake lines, I didn't lose all the fluid and I would have to re-bleed all the other wheels. So what I did was I took the cap that actually came with the brake line and this was on the end of it and that I was able to slide over since it's rubber and it was flexible. And then I made this brake line here. Now what this is, is we got a double flare on both sides and this is a standard American size, this is a standard American thread which fits into the standard American coupler which also is the same as this standard American thread. So these all thread together. But then this side here is the correct size to thread into this hose which is a metric. And this threads in really nicely. It's tight and it doesn't wobble around. If I thread in the other side, it threads in a lot easier. It might seem like, wow, this is the right thread. It goes in really easy, but it wobbles. This is not what you want it to do. The thread actually wobbles back and forth a lot. So just that little bit of variance in there. These are almost equals. This one's metric, this one's standard American. They fit, but it makes a big difference. This would fail and it would leak. So it's important that you have the right connectors. So we can go ahead and put this together and make sure everything is nice and tight. Then we can hook the hose up and make sure everything is together and not leaking. So I have all the brake lines all installed and bent and the hardware is hooked up. We pumped the brake, it built pressure, and it doesn't leak anywhere. So this system is okay and ready to go. Now, it's much cheaper to get brake line online and build it yourself. The only thing you have to have is, of course, the brake line fittings that fit the uh, hardware and a double flaring tool. That's, base, that's all you need to be working on these brake lines. You can bend this with your hand. And we had to get these fittings at the local hardware store because actually it was about the same price or cheaper at the hardware store to get these fittings online. Normally it's cheaper to get them online, but in this case it was cheaper at the hardware store because there's no shipping. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.